Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Ben here. It's Friday. The weekend's here, but even better news, Sunday's coming, and I hope that you've had a great week. I know that many of us have been sick and kind of fighting colds, and um, I managed to pick one up myself, so I feel like, you know, kind of one of the cool kids, I guess, with everybody else, but uh, feeling better and uh, hope to feel even better by Sunday, and just want to let you know that I've been praying for you and praying for our time together as we get ready to gather for this Sunday. I uh, want to share a couple of announcements as we get started here. Um, first thing is this Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, and that is our family Sunday. And that just means a couple of things. We usually try to highlight uh, some things going on with our children or youth ministries. We celebrate uh, a time of communion together. And then following our service, we have a potluck. And so it's just a great opportunity for for us to be together uh, in a special way this Sunday. And so I just encourage you to participate, uh, make plans to attend, uh, come to, to the potluck. We would be uh, we would be just happy if you would be able to make that and and share in that time of fellowship together. So uh, want to make you aware of that. And then also um, want to give you an opportunity to give in a special offering this Sunday. Um, I've been working with um, the Spanish congregation in helping a family that has moved here from Venezuela. Uh, they don't have much of anything. And so uh, they're working hard to raise some money to help support them. And I thought I would invite you into that process as well, um, being able to uh, bless them in, in some way. And so we're going to take up a, you know, a special offering if you feel so inclined to give towards them, to help them in in their needs that they have at this moment, that would be fantastic. Uh, this is above and beyond your normal tithes and offerings. Uh, this is something that would just be uh, directed specifically towards them. So if you feel so inclined and, and want to pray about that, uh, come Sunday ready to give and to help that family. That would be fantastic. Um, I want to share uh, with you kind of where I'm at this week in my study and getting ready for um, message this week. We've been talking the last several weeks, um, the sermon series called The Wilderness, and we've been walking through several passages of Scripture <clears throat> that really um, kind of highlight and, and kind of move us back to, to remembrance of these promises that God has made. Uh, that he is with us, that he goes before us, um, and and how we encounter these wilderness experiences, uh, what God may want to teach us and show us and have us experience in that time. Um, I realize that not everybody at this season in their life is going through a, a wilderness experience, but I've been having conversations with with several of you, and and you are, and uh, so this is, um, I think, for some of us, uh, just a really um, needed time uh, to reflect on on what God does in these seasons of our life, and and what hope that there is. And if you're not going through a season like that, fantastic. Um, but maybe you learn some things along the way that um, deepen your faith in these moments, and that may. Um, I don't know, God may use down the road, bring to remembrance and encourage you uh, to remind you of these, these things and these promises that he's made towards us. So um, as we've kind of, lo we've looked at Moses, we've looked at Abraham and Hagar, uh, we've looked at David. Um, this last Sunday, we talked about um, one of the things that I think is a theme that's going to carry into this week a little bit is uh, I mentioned that in the wilderness, we don't want anything that that encumbers us, right? We don't want to take things with us that are unnecessary, that that weigh us down, that hold us back. And that theme carries into this week a little bit. Um, we're going to be looking at a couple of New Testament passages. Um, we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, um, and John chapter 1, 6 through 8. And th these passages introduce us to <clears throat> to John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the one that was uh, this prophet that was sent ahead of the promised Messiah, Jesus, to prepare the way. And 
And I want to share a couple of things um, with you as we look at this passage. Uh, here's Mark chapter, <coughs> excuse me, chapter one and verses uh, four through eight as we as we look through this. And it says, so John John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt tied around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So we have this, this introduction of who John the Baptist is. And, and as you think about the wilderness, I mean, this was somebody who lived in the wilderness. Uh, this is where God called him to be. And he was a voice of hope in the wilderness. And so there's, within these, these couple of passages, I'm trying to kind of decide where we're going to land because there's some important themes that come out um, in in these passages, and so uh, you know we can't help but but notice that that God called somebody into the wilderness to be one of hope for those that are in this wilderness. And this wilderness, sometimes as we've talked about before, is caused by decisions we make, um, whether intentional or not. And and these decisions oftentimes. Um, are, are are sinful things that that hold us there and keep us captive, and so if if that's the case, and then this wilderness experience becomes this hopeless place that we're trying to figure a way out of, and here we see somebody called by God to prepare the way for Jesus to let people know that that there's someone coming who will give them the forgiveness and the hope that they ultimately need, and so maybe for some of us that's that's part of 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 our um, purpose, maybe in a wilderness experience, is to be one like John the Baptist, to to be one of hope. Um, maybe some of us find ourselves as as one in this wilderness and not understanding or seeing a way out, and not fully realizing just quite how Jesus can forgive, how Jesus can um, lead us out of this place that we find ourselves in to the ultimate um, ultimate source of salvation, ultimate source of hope, ultimate source of peace, um, to a life to the full. So, so there's a couple of, of themes that just really seem to, to come about in these passages. And I think even if um, we're ones that, that find ourselves stuck in the wilderness and, 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 and just need Jesus' forgiveness to get us out, we, because we've been there, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, dogs think that they hear somebody coming to the door, but uh, because of that, sometimes there's this way that, that we can point others to Jesus because we've been there. We've, we've experienced the hope. And so we get to be ones like John that, that are beacons of hope that, that are, that are pointing to Jesus so there's a whole lot that, that we're going to unpack in this. Um, I'd encourage you to, to read through these passages. Again, Mark chapter 1, um, we're going to focus on verses 4 through 8, and then we'll be in John chapter 1 and focus on 6 through 8. Don't just uh, stop at those few verses. I'd encourage you to read kind of all around that and, and get a picture of, of what's taking place and what God is doing. Uh, what is he saying? What is he trying to communicate to us? Um, and not just try to read ourselves into this passage, but but what does God want to say to us from this passage? What is he revealing to us about himself? What are we to learn? And so, so that's how scripture begins to inform us. Um, so anyway, I'd encourage you to do that. I uh, encourage you to spend some time in, in God's word in the next excuse me, couple of days fighting this cold, praying for you. Uh, we're going to enjoy a great time together. I have no doubt about that. Um, looking forward to being with you. Spanish service begins at 9 a.m. Our Sunday school begins at 945 and our English service at 1045. So 
God bless you. Praying for you. I'm excited that Sunday's coming, and we'll see you soon.